Hello all, welcome back to another video. For this video, we will be going through some demonstrations on the Windows feature which is known as the User Account Control, UAC for short, that is available on Windows system. This article shown over here by none other than the author of Cobot Strike provides a very detailed and easy to understand explanation on UAC. It is highly recommended to give it a read. The content is well written and easy to digest, a very good read overall. Basically on Windows systems, all processes, programs that are running will be assigned a process integrity level. By default, most of the programs that are executed by a local Windows user will be given a medium integrity level. This is true even if the local user account is an administrator account. In order to obtain a high integrity level process assignment, you have to right click on a program and select run as administrator following which the uac prompt will then appear in which you have to click on yes to allow access the program will then be executed and assign a high integrity level instead this will be shown later on in our demonstration which will clear things up more this article provides a few more examples we will quickly scroll through this and carry on with our hands-on practical demonstration the link to the article will be in the video's description, so be sure to check it out and have a read on it. Alright, let's hop over to our Windows machine. Before we begin, it should be noted that Windows Defender is turned off to facilitate the demonstration. It will be time consuming to come up with Windows Defender bypasses. There are quite a few videos in this channel that provides step-by-step -step instructions on how Windows Defender can be bypassed. So if you are interested in that, please check out the other videos. So this is our Windows 11 machine. As shown over here, our current user is OJK. And OJK is a local administrator on this Windows 11 machine. Despite being a local administrator, if we try to perform a privilege action, such as adding of a new local user to the Windows machine, we will be greeted with the access denied error message. This is because the command prompt cmd.exe that we are running in is given the medium integrity level by default. This can be observed via the sysinternal tool Process Explorer shown over here. In order to have an elevated cmd.exe process, we have to right click on the command prompt program and select Run as Administrator. And when we do that, we will be greeted with the User Account Control UAC prompt as shown over here. If our user is a local administrator, we can simply select yes and proceed. cmd.exe will then be executed and given the high integrity level. The net user command to add a new local user will then succeed. Another way we can check the integrity level of the process that we are in is to run the command whoami slash groups as shown over here. It says high mandatory level. If we hop over to the previous command prompt and run the same command, who am I slash groups, we can see that it says medium mandatory level instead. This is in a nutshell a quick overview of UAC and a simple demonstration. So here is the problem. Oftentimes when we compromise a Windows machine, it is going to be via a remote shell access. There will be no GUI graphical user interface it is not possible for us to elevate our process integrity level from medium to high because we will not be able to right click and select run as administrator and then select yes to proceed. This means that we will need a way to bypass the UAC prompt and elevate our remote shell access from medium to high integrity level so that we can perform privileged functionalities. Let's hop over to our attacker Kali machine and demonstrate this. Over here on my Kali machine, there are two reverse shell binaries generated. One of them is going to connect back to the Kali machine on TCP port 8443, while the other binary will connect back to us on port 9443. Let's transfer the reverse shell binary 8443 to our Windows machine and execute it. As shown over here, the shell 8443.exe is running in medium integrity level by default. So over here on our Kali attacker machine, so this is exactly what I mean. We usually only have a remote shell access like this and not a GUI access. 
And when we compromise a victim account, the process integrity level will be by default medium. We will then need to bypass the UAC prompt and somehow elevate our process integrity level from medium to high instead. Fortunately, there are many ways we can do so. One good example is using the Fort Helper.exe Windows binary as shown over here in this PowerShell script. We can see that this technique is from 2017 and it still works today. So basically, we have to define the program we want to run. Then, we create a new item in the registry, create a new property under the item and set the value of it to be the program that we want to execute. We should then run the Fort Helper.exe binary this should trigger the registry value that we have added and execute whatever program that we have set. Let's execute PowerShell in our reverse shell. Let's copy and paste the registry commands. Since the port 8443 is already used in our current reverse shell connection, we will need a second binary, the reverse shell 9443 binary. Let's download the 9443 reverse shell binary to our Windows machine first. So this will be the program that will be triggered and executed via the Fort Helper EXE program. Before we trigger the Fort Helper.exe, let's set up a listener on our Kali on TCP port 9443 for the incoming reverse shell. Alright, looks good. Let's execute it. As expected, our listener on port 9443 has a callback and now, if we were to verify the process integrity level, it will be high instead of medium. We can also verify this on our Windows machine with Process Explorer. As shown over here, the shell9443.exe is given high process integrity level. And if we were to perform privileged action such as adding of a new local Windows account, it will work. So this is one way you can bypass the UAC prompt when you have no GUI access on the victim's Windows machine via the forthelper.exe binary. There are many many other ways as well, such as using SC and Task Scheduler on Windows. So this article over here on Pwn Defend is another great reference that I will be providing in the video's description, so be sure to check it out. Alright all, I will be concluding the video here. I hope you all have enjoyed the video and find it to be helpful. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it. See you soon in the next video. Bye.